Good morning, my ghoulies, my ghosties, my long-legged beasties. Today, in the ghoulish garden, we're going to be talking about growing pumpkins, the spookiest plant you can possibly grow. So join me. Let's dig in. Good morning, my spookies. We're out here, it's a little before 10 a.m. and we're gonna take a look at this pumpkin plant. This happens to be a pie pumpkin, so not a jack-o'-lantern. These pumpkins won't get very big, but they will have very, very thick flesh, which is great for roasting. So, we're gonna take a look at actually hand pollinating these. Let me flip this camera around, we'll take a look. Okay, darlings, this is my pie pumpkin. The root actually starts here. It's a little covered with uh, grass clippings right now because it's grown for a, probably a couple months now. And it's as it grows along, it starts to kind of die off the initial leaves. But as we move forward to the new growth, we can see it's really bushed out and there's quite a few flowers here. Okay, let's take a look at these flowers. So this here is a female flower. You can see there's quite a few ants in there. I'm not too concerned about that. We have had some ant issues, but um, at this point in the stage, they're, they're not really going to cause any problems. So this is a female flower. You can actually tell based on this structure right here. So let me show you a male flower and we'll see the difference. So this is a male flower. So you can see here how it has sort of just this long straight tube. Uh, instead of the three structures that were in the female flower, that's how you tell the difference. Another way to tell the difference is this flower at the base doesn't really have anything. But if we look at the base of the female flower, you can see this big bulb here. That's basically a baby pumpkin. So once it's fertilized, that will grow. Now I hand fertilized one two days ago. And you can see that here. That's a new baby pumpkin growing. One of the things that I notice a lot of people say is that they have lots and lots of flowers, but they don't actually get a lot of pumpkins. So what's the problem? Well, pumpkins really kind of require specific pollination. They're not self-pollinators. They have male and female flowers, and the pollen from the male flower has to make it into the female flower for it to work. So if you have a good bee population in the area, you probably won't have to worry about this. But if you're in an urban area like I am, bee populations aren't great. So what you might need to do is actually hand pollinate these. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Because that's actually the only way that I've gotten pumpkins out of this plant, is by hand pollinating these flowers. I've yet to, to have one get naturally pollinated. So here's what we do. So what needs to happen is, and I'm just gonna do this with my hand. You can do it with a Q-tip or a paintbrush or whatever. But basically you just kind of rub that stamen. Make sure we can see what's happening here. I know the lighting's not great. I'm just gonna rub that stamen with my finger until I get some yellow pollen on it. And then we're gonna go over here to the female flower and essentially rub that pollen onto those structures. So another way you can do it, if, this, if it doesn't seem like you're really getting any pollen on your fingers, you can actually come into this flower here and basically break this off and use it as a paintbrush. Um, and so let me, let me go ahead and demonstrate that real quick. Okay, so here's the female flower, right? With those three lobes in the bottom, along with a bunch of ants. And then I'm gonna go ahead and basically just break off this male flower. There we go, so there's the male flower with that stem in there and more ants. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of rip off these petals and freak the ants out. There we go. 
So there's where all your pollen is, right there. So we're basically just going to use this as a paintbrush and paint the pollen onto those structures. I mean, you don't have to be ridiculously thorough because it's not going to take too much to actually pollinate that, but that's a good way to make sure it's going to happen. And that way we know that this little node back here is going to become a pumpkin. All right, what's the next thing we need to know about pumpkin plants? Pests. All those creepy little crawlies and, you know, little <laughs> that'll eat up your plant. So one of the easiest ones that you can actually find and take care of manually is the squash bug eggs. So let's take a look here. You can actually see through the glow of the sun right there. This is, you're looking at the front of the leaf, but if we flip it over, boom, there they are. You can see all of those little dots. Those are actually eggs. So there's a couple of ways that you can handle that. You can come out here with some duct tape or, you know, another sticky tape that you might have around and you basically sort of pull off those eggs. I'll show you how to do that. Or you can use an insecticidal soap um, and basically spray down the leaves. So you want to be careful when you're using um, chemicals um, just because they can end up harming the positive bugs that you do want that are actually keeping your plant healthy. So you can see there's a few hanging out here. There's one right in there in the base, a few right there. Um, and so they can, they breed quickly and they can become a serious problem quickly. So let's go ahead and address that real quick. Here we've got some duct tape. This happens to be black duct tape, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tear off a small piece. I really don't need a lot. And all you have to do is basically bend that leaf over so you can see those seeds. And because it's early morning, the sunlight is not great and I apologize, but this is the best time to pollinate especially. And so, okay, I'm just gonna basically pick those off. There you go. So now you've got all those little seeds or eggs, I keep calling them seeds, they're eggs. And um, now they won't hatch. So. Basically just kind of pull those off by hand. And there you go. Now your, your leaf is clean. You've got all your nasty little critters stuck to tape where they can die horrible tragic deaths before even being born. Okay. Let's do a few more of these real quick. There was just one hanging out right there in that corner and I want to get it. don't want it to... There we go. And they do tend to put them in really obnoxious places that make it hard to get to. There's another cluster. So it's kind of tedious, but it is definitely the best way to make sure that they're gone. So, and they do, it's always on the underside of the leaves, so you want to check all of your healthy leaves. Um, and, uh, and just make sure that there aren't any more hiding out. So there are some over there. I'm going to get those in a minute. Um, but uh, that is just kind of a process of having a pumpkin plant is pests and dealing with them. Okay, so how about a preventative before they even get to this stage? Or even an effective treatment when they are at this stage? First of all, die you little buggy. <coughs> die. Die bugs, die. All right. So instead of doing the duct tape method, what you can do is use an insecticidal soap. Something like this guy right here. Um, I like the insecticidal soaps better than um, like full-on pesticides because these kind of just address the problem insects and don't completely wipe out your entire ecosystem on your plant. There are a lot of positive insects that work symbiotically with your plant. They help it grow, they help establish a good root system, they help it pollinate, etc, etc. And there are a lot of good insects that actually help keep down the bad insect pests. But when your bad insect pests get out of hand, something like this can be really helpful. Um, make sure you read all the directions. This stuff you're supposed to shake first. 
and you can hear it kind of get frothy in there like soap um, and then you just sort of douse your plants thoroughly um, you want to make sure you get the underside of those leaves too because of those egg deposits if you just spray the the top of the leaf it's helpful but a lot of times they'll just hide out on that underside and continue to live and we don't want them to live we want them to die so make sure you get the bottom side of the leaves as well um, this stuff is also great for another major pest that you can get with pumpkins and other squash plants and that's powdery mildew um, I'll show you what that looks like but uh, this stuff actually seems to work really well on it as well. We were having some serious issues. I tried this stuff out. Um, it takes a day or two to kind of start seeing some results, but it actually really helped and my plant really started to take off afterwards. So let's take a look at what powdery mildew looks like. So these are some of the older leaves on the plant. Um, and again, I apologize for the lighting. It is early morning and I've just got a lot of various things shading things, but you can still see it on here. So you can see here, like on this old leaf here, see that white, well, kind of powder look. And that's, that's why they call it powdery mildew. But um, it does, it looks like somebody kind of shook baby powder on your leaves, but it's not. It's actually a mildew that's very damaging. Um, you see this one has quite a bit of it on there. I need to reapply that insecticidal soap. Um, it says reapply every few days, and I'd, I'd have to look at the label again to see exactly, but always read the label thoroughly anyway. So I'm going to actually go ahead and reapply this uh, to the whole plant, and then we can, uh, we'll come back in a couple of days and see how it's doing. Okay, so we've got our insecticidal soap, got that all shaken up so it's nice and frothy. We're just going to start spraying this plant down. Another reason why I'm doing this in the morning, as opposed to midday, um, is because if you're applying anything directly to the top of the leaves, um, anything liquid basically, it can actually, if, if it's in the heat of the day, the sun can basically boil that on the leaf and it, it burns the leaves. It causes the leaves to burn. Not good. So when you're applying something like this that's a liquid to the surface, you really want to do it either early in the morning or late in the evening so that it's not direct overhead sunlight yet. Um, it's getting a little bit late in the day to apply this, but I think I'm going to be okay um, because it is still fairly early and, you know, it really, sun's not going to be directly overhead until about 2 in the afternoon anyway, so I think we'll be alright, but um, just something to consider when you're, when you're applying something like this. Well, my darlings. That about concludes this video about growing your own pumpkins at home. Um, if you have any questions or anything that I didn't cover, any problems that you might have come across or anything that worked really well for you, please do leave a comment below um, and I will take a look at those and see if I can answer them as best I can. Um, I will go ahead and do a follow-up video to see the baby pumpkins that we just pollinated, see them start to form. And then we'll go ahead and do a full-on follow-up video when they get to be this size. This one I harvested a few weeks before doing this video. Um, and so we'll talk about when they're ready, how to harvest, curing pumpkins, and, uh, and then perhaps even do a video on making pumpkin pie with fresh pie pumpkins from your own backyard. So, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. It certainly does help me out quite a bit to uh, get my videos seen by more of you lovely spooky darlings. And if you would like to make sure that you don't miss those follow-up pumpkin videos, please do subscribe as well. Thanks so much, and until next time, rest in peace.